Yeah, uh, my name is Chelsea Cedrine, uh, and I'm going to talk about solving difficult reachability problems in Jump. So I'm interested in control systems. What is a control system? Uh, for those of you who are not already initiated, I have seen that many of you already are. But um, it's a dynamical system that takes control inputs, say like a car that we're controlling with our steering inputs. Um, but I'm interested primarily when the control inputs come from a computer. So reachability analysis, um, uh, sorry, let me restart that sentence. Um, so we can do sampling on our control systems to figure out whether they are generally performing as desired. We can do some simulation, get some trajectories, and say our airplane, it's generally flying in the direction we want it to fly. Um, but the problem is, is that we can't be guaranteed to find all um, sort of bad behaviors or failure examples. And so part of my PhD thesis and some of my postdoctoral work now in Sweden uh, focuses on doing a type of formal analysis called reachability analysis, where we compute not just you know, some trajectories or do some simulations, but we compute all possible sets that the system, all possible states that the system could reach. So th this, this is like you know, the whole reachable state space over a time horizon. And this allows us to say that if a failure does not occur, it does not exist. And if it does, well, then we found it. Uh, I developed a package in Julia called over at verify.jl during the course of my PhD thesis, uh, which targets reachability analysis for a very specific and difficult kind of system called nonlinear dynamical systems with neural network control policies. Uh, and I'm just going to give a little overview of sort of uh, that package. So um, there's many ways to solve reachability problems. The way that I chose to address them in my thesis was through solving optimization problems, which brings me all uh, here today, <laughs> here, which brings me here with you today. Um, so one of the methods that you can, by which you can use optimization to solve reachability problems is through what uh, I'll talk about as uh, explicit computation. Essentially, what's going on is we encode the system constraints for our control system into the optimizer and we find an initial feasible point, and then we say, for example, maximize and minimize along every dimension to find a minimal enclosing hull of the reachable set using the optimizer, where, if unclear, the star represents this sort of implicit reachable set that we don't have, expli we don't have access to, but uh, it exists sort of in the optimizer uh, after we encode the constraints for our control system. And then once we have this explicit you know, hull of the reachable set, we can then intersect it with, say, an avoid set and check for a non-empty intersection, naturally using lazy sets. And if there exists some non-empty intersection, well, this is bad, but better to have found the failure than to not know it exists. Uh, and then we repeat this for every time step in our time horizon. At just a particular note here, like the ability to change the objective and jump while keeping the constraints the same is super useful because as I mentioned in the previous slide, when we're computing um, uh, holes of the reachable set, we may not be able to do it in a single call to optimize. We may have to, for example, for the hyper-rectangular case that I demonstrated here, do it in two n calls where n is our state dimension. So the other approach to using optimization to compute reachable sets that I'll discuss here uh, is, I'll, I'll describe it as sort of feasibility checking, where we do something quite similar. We encode our system constraints into the optimizer, and now we also ex explicitly encode the avoid set that we're interested in avoiding into the optimizer, and we ask for feasible solutions. If there exists a feasible solution, well then uh, that's our failure point and we found it, and if there does not exist a feasible solution, well then, um, there's no failure points, and that's a win for our, uh, the controller and our dynamical system. And then again, we repeat this for every time step. There are some things, though, that make reachability analysis difficult. For linear systems, it's pretty fast and pretty straightforward, but um, I'm particularly interested when we have difficulties like smooth nonlinearities in the dynamics and uh, neural networks in our control policy, or perhaps somewhere else inside our um, you know, sort of closed loop feedback system. And uh, adding them naively to the optimizer would make the problem non-convex, which uh, is not what we want here because speed and optimality are essential. 
So uh, also during my thesis, I developed this package overt.jl, sort of a sub package to overt verify, which uh, addresses the first of these problems by computing area minimal piecewise linear bounds for essentially arbitrary nonlinear functions of any dimension. I won't go into the details, but um, we can discuss later, if, and I have a paper on it if you have questions. Uh, so sort of jumping back to the higher level package over at Verify, now that we've addressed the first um, sort of source of difficulty that is the smooth nonlinearity um, by computing piecewise linear bounds, well, we can take you know, a piecewise linear upper and piecewise linear lower bound, and this creates a piecewise linear inclusion. Uh, and if we restrict our control policy to only having ReLU activation functions, which are piecewise linear, then essentially everything is piecewise linear. And we can encode it all into a mixed integer linear program and solve for optimality. Uh, and as I said just a few slides ago, uh, having an optimal solution is important because uh, it ensures that our algorithm is sound. We want over approximations of the reachable set so that we can say for sure if we haven't found any failure points, none exist. If we had an under approximation, we wouldn't have that sort of sound claim. But there's still one more problem, uh, that is this sort of temporal aspect that I've kind of glossed over um, so far. Uh, keeping reachability both tight and tractable is difficult. Most methods in the literature they use what I'll call sort of pure one-step reachability, where once you've computed uh, a hull of the reachable set, say at time t equals one, you uh, then just, you take that hull, you encode one copy of your dynamics and your control policy, and you compute the hull at t equals two. And then you do this in an iterative process, but it leads to what's called the wrapping effect, where this approximation error compounds um, and it leads to really conservative approximations of the reachable set. So um, an idea that I played around with in my thesis, and I, I'm sure has been explored before in the literature, is what I'll call here pure n-step reachability, where what you do is the op you encode multiple copies of the dynamics and control policy, one for every time step, uh, sort of into the future or into the past, whether doing forward or backward reachability, that we'd like to um, compute a set for. Uh, but as you might guess, when you have you know, these nonlinear, smooth nonlinearities approximated with piecewise linear inclusions, um, and you have the neural network, this gets intractable really quickly. So uh, in my thesis, what I did was I uh, proposed this sort of hand-tuned scheduling, where what we do is we have a couple of sort of one-step problems, and then we solve like a big n-step problem here, n equals four. Uh, and it keeps the reachable set relatively tight and relatively tractable. So my newest project uh, has a long name for which I will take suggestions, but um, I call a temporal refinement heuristic for tenuously tractable discrete time reachability problems. I call it tenuously tractable because I feel these problems are always on the edge of uh, either it takes a few minutes to compute or it could take the lifetime of the universe. Uh, time will only tell. So uh, the algorithm that I propose in this most recent paper is essentially what I do is I um, search for the longest tractable n-step query subject to some time budget for the whole reachability problem. Uh, and I do this by computing increasingly long n-step problems until I make an estimate and I say, okay, well, it seems like we won't be able to get to tn within our budget if we um, use n-step queries that are any larger. So let's compute some one-step queries and then use sort of jumps of this size here, like n equals four, in order to finish out our time horizon. Um, what's nice about this is that because the error compounds temporally, this limits the growth of the reachable set to have like really tight um, n-step queries for the beginning of the time horizon. Um, yeah, and it works decently. Um, yeah, some details that might be interesting for you as optimization people. Um, at each solve, I enforce a sort of rough time limit through early stopping. Ooh. Oh, I think, I can't, I don't know if this came out right, in conversion. Anyway, um, oh yeah, there were some Julia calls in between. It's okay. Uh, yeah, so I enforce a time limit through early stopping with, through the jump interface, which is uh, really critical to this working. 
Um, and also, uh, as I mentioned before, I don't actually use the primal solution that jump gives. I use the dual bound when early stopping because I need these sets to be true over approximations in order to contain that, the actual reachable set. Um, so uh, yeah, and in order to sort of make sure that the answers that jump gives me are, well, Gurobi through jump, um, are reasonable, I uh, check if the objective bound is finite and if the relative gap between the primal and dual solutions is like within 50%, which is quite a big budget, but uh, it works out okay. Um, and if, it's, if these conditions aren't met, then I let it solve a little longer uh, in order to come up with a solution that's reasonable before proceeding. Uh, yeah, and uh, this is sort of what it looks like. Um, the sort of conclusion here is that you can produce reachable sets of varying fidelity, given that you allocate very um, varying amounts of time to the uh, reachability algorithm, and you don't need to do any of that hand tuning. You can just put in your problem, and it will give you, you know, some trajectory of reachable sets. Uh, and what you can kind of tell from these plots is that, where is the mouse? Um, this is the hand tuned approach. And we're like between 20 and 70% faster for similar amounts of error, which was a nice and somewhat unexpected result. Uh, this is like what the sets look like. And yeah, this is a little summary of things I've discussed. Um, so this is the overt package, uh, overt verify, and probably coming soon to a GitHub near you, uh, something along the lines of automatic refinement.jl. Um, other packages that I developed sort of, or uh, my lab mates developed sort of uh, related to this work is um, one of them is expression to mip.jl, which takes arbitrary expressions of the Julia built-in EXPR type uh, and adds it to your uh, jump model um, as a MILP, and it, it calls overt.jl to encode uh, your smooth nonlinear functions. Um, yeah, and then neural verification, which contains ped pedagogical implementations of various neural network verification algorithms that was uh, written by some of my lab mates. And uh, yeah, thank you for listening. Um, I'd be really happy to discuss if you have thoughts on uh, optimization techniques or ideas for using Jump that could make this faster, better, et cetera. <laughs>